really went on a sort of spiritual healing journey to fix the relationships that I didn't have anymore, um, rekindle the things that are important to me and reconnect with God. You know, that was a big part for me was, you know, I was always a believer, but I didn't really um, have a, a deep connection. And I think in that moment when I lost that second fight and, you know, my world was spinning out of control, I didn't know which way was up, which way was down. It's, I'd always describe it like being in this really dark room. It's pitch black and there is just a pinhole of light. And this is like the moments when you're considering whether your life is still worth living, contemplating, taking my own life. And there's a pinhole of light. And I can either stay until the room's completely dark and I'm gone, or I can run to that light. And so I, I ran to the light, even though I didn't know where it was going to take me. And, you know, that's symbolic of, you know, of starting the healing journey, the healing trajectory, dealing with the things that I had not dealt with getting rid of the things in my life that weren't serving me or moving me in the right direction, realizing that I'm not just Misha Tate, the fighter, finding who I am beyond that. And really, you know, soul searching. And, you know, I'm not somebody who, you know, pushes religion on people. I think that your relationship with, with God or Jesus, um, doesn't need to happen in a church. Like the people are the church. You don't have to go to church, you know, but I do say if anybody's like still listening to the message here, not trying to push anything on you. I don't have anything to gain from this. But if you feel like you're missing something in life, I believe that there's power in a relationship with God. And I will just leave it there. You know, I feel like there is freedom in that. And it set me free in a way because just like the song, Jesus Take the Wheel, I can kind of like, hey, it's all, it's all good. Like when one door closes in my face, I know, like, I'm so good. Like, I know who I am at the end of the day. I'm a God-fearing woman. Like, that's who I am. And you could take everything else away from me in life, but you can never take that away. And so to have something that is so constant. And I mean, you could take my house away. You could take my title away. Someday I won't be a fighter anymore. Right? Someday I'll be retired and, like, I won't be able to say, oh, I am a fighter. I'll say I was a fighter. Right? Um... God forbid I could lose my, I could lose my husband. I could lose my children. I could lose, I, the title mother could be taken from me. I hate to even think about that, but I'm talking about like those, we really have to look at we the things we take for granted. People lose their children and they're no longer fathers and mothers, right? People lose their significant others. They're no longer husbands and wives. People lose their, their homes, you know, look at the, the natural disasters that happen in North Carolina. I mean, and, and Ashford that these homes are, they're not even there. They're gone. They're not even, I mean, these people are losing loved ones, lives, homes, livestock, lifestyle, everything. Those things can be taken away right now. 10 seconds from now is not guaranteed. Mm -mm. We think it's going to come. 10 seconds from now is going to come, but it's not guaranteed. All those things can be taken. But the thing that can never be taken from me is my faith in God. And so that gives me the security to know that whatever there is to face, He's got my back. Like I'm, I will, I can, and I will, and I will do it from a place that's so much more secure now. Like I'm not reactive to people anymore. Like people, you can't hurt my feelings. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Try Dylan. Call my kids ugly. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, well, I think my kids are great. Um, that's fine. You know, maybe you think my kids aren't the cutest thing in the world, but I do like, I have my peace because of my foundation with God. And yeah, peace is everything, right? It's the thing that can't be taken from you. So with all that being said, um, I try never to take any of those things for granted, but it's much easier said when I know that I'm secure and I know exactly who I am. And I know that no matter which direction life takes me, I'll be fine. I'll figure it out. If the house metaphorical home burns down, I have the tools to build it again. Like I just stay calm, go find some wood, go find some nails and build my house again. You know, like, that metaphorical home and life will be torn down many, many, many times. But every time you have the balls and gumption to build it again, you'll build it back better than it was before, right? Each time you reinvent that, you build that house, it will be better and nicer. You'll be like, actually, I didn't really like the kitchen the way the kitchen was anyways. 
Like, I'm going to build it better. I know what I want in this new home, you know? Um, so that's just how I look at life. Every time the wrecking ball comes in and wipes everything out from underneath me, it's like, okay, there's an opportunity to build it back better than it was before. Like, I'm good. I'm going to share something with you then, since we got all in, into that direction, because this is also something you and I didn't get to talk about. So and that's why you saw me smiling the entire time you start talking about this. Um, I've been in uh, raised Catholic my whole life and I've always prayed and, you know, but not to the point of where you could say it's a proper relationship with God. You think it is. Right. Until you realize it's not. And I'll tell you just briefly, because this is not about me. This is me sharing this with you. Um, you know, for so long, things kept getting better for me and I accumulate more things. I've got a beautiful wife. I, I've got us finally into a beautiful home after all the struggles. I've got this sweet car and all of this stuff, people complimenting that I never had before. I, most of the time I was having people just hit piece me online. And finally, you know, I've got all this going on and I just would go to bed at night and just, I'm just not happy. Why? What, what, is missing. You know, I'd lay down, I'd have anxiety. I wouldn't ever go to bed happy. And it doesn't make sense. When I figured out and I started to put God first every night, every morning, first thing I do, thank you. First thing I do when I wake up, I spend an hour either in the Bible or reading books. You'll see if you ever see, like I'll put something in my morning every day to try to help people, give them a word, something small, because hey, like you said, I'm not going to push this on you either, but I'm certainly going to show you. And I think that the more people that show, that might it might just catch on with somebody. Who knows? And it, like once again, if you get one person that you're helping, because that's in the Bible, that's what you're supposed to attempt to do. And you know, he says, if they you go into a town and they don't like it, shake the dust off and move on. But at least try. And I think that if we try and get people back on that, or at least understanding, because there's these preconceived things that people misinterpret they read they don't understand metaphor they read things literally and don't like i have bibles here that break down you i i will read a section and i will go down and then get the actual translation of what it means highlight it go back to it i have them all tabbed out everything and i think that if we get more people to just not push it you don't push things on people but at least give some sort of indication on what they're missing when that clicks and you find that, everything, everything opens up and changes. You stop being a slave to things or opinions or all of this bullshit that, that you can't take with you when you go. The only thing you can really take with you is your relationship with God. And once you figure that out, of course I want nice shit. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want comfort? But it doesn't mean anything if you don't have that first. It just doesn't mean anything. It's worthless. And yeah. you understand that when you don't feel it, you know? Yeah. So, no, and, and I'm, I'm, you said it so well, and I'm glad that you shared that because I think people live in a world where it's so propagandized. I say that's a long word. Um, <laughs> where, you know, things matter. Like, oh, what are you working for? So you can have a nicer home. So you can have a nicer car. So you can have this. So you can have that. Um, why? It's like, well, so they could, they can have more of your money. It's like, wait, so, you basic, I mean, and I'm not trying to put anybody down. Of course, you know, I, I want to, you know, be able to have a home and, you know, have a car and these things or whatever. But all I'm saying though, is like, you have to put that on a balancing scale and realize that that shit doesn't really mean very much. Mm -hmm. Like I don't wear name brand clothes anymore. Like, unless it's like a gift or anything like that. Like I don't buy the shit because I'm like, it's just clothes. Like, I don't care. Like, I know that, 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 um, you know, people are, who are of celebrity status are supposed to do that. Well, they do that so that they can make people think that they're better than you, but they're not better than you. Mm -hmm. They're just people like they put their pants on in the morning, one leg at a time, just like we do. Like gravity applies the same to them. Like it is all the same. Nobody's cooler than anybody. It is, mm -hmm. And that's also one of the things that's cool about having a relationship with God is it's just a great equalizer. I don't care. Black, white, Asian, gay, married, divorced, like sinner, this, that, like we all, like we're all children of God. We all make sins. We all fuck up. So mm -hmm. who am I to judge? Like you've been through some shit. I've been through some shit. Cool. Like what can we learn from each other? 
Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here to help you. You're here to help me. Awesome. We're, we're like, there's no, there's nothing that makes you better than me. There's nothing that makes me better than you. And it has nothing to do with the amount of shit we can buy or the nicest things that we can drive. That mm-hmm. just is what tells me that, you know, it's like, well, you, you know, you bought into like what other people think is important. And again, I'm not pooing anybody for having a nice home or having a nice car or anything. Those things are nice, but doesn't mean anything in comparison, in my humble opinion, of having your peace and your freedom. That is priceless. There's no amount of money in the world that can give you that, can give you a good night of sleep. Doesn't happen. You know, and I see a lot of, you know, athletes, celebrities, these people, and my heart breaks when I see them commit suicide, when I see them take their lives, because I have at least a small understanding of what it's like to, to taste that life of of having everything and still feeling like, why am I still sad? Like I just made a million dollars on, on this fight with, you know, with, uh, always with Amanda technically, you know, when I made that and I've got this beautiful belt and you know, this and that, like I've got a house, like, shouldn't I be happy? Like, wait, that's what every, my, like my whole life. That's what, you know, TV's telling me. That's what the messaging is like. You want all these things because these things are great. No, they're temporary dopamine hits and they don't mean shit at the end of the day. Because if you don't know who you are, if you don't have your peace, if you don't have your freedom, you will not be happy. Plenty of billionaires out there who are not happy. They have all the money in the world, not a care in the world. Otherwise could pay for whatever they want. They don't have their peace. They haven't figured it out yet. So. I think it's great if you can have both <laughs> yeah. nice things and have your peace and your freedom. But I think it's hard to do if you don't have, um, you know, that kind of faith foundation foundation. I think it's, I think it's difficult to do. I don't, I don't know if it's possible. I find that most people I think who are the happiest have a, have a, a genuine authentic relationship with God. But um, either way, you know, like if, if you're missing something, like what do you, what do you have to lose? I'm not saying go to church. I'm not saying start tithing. Don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about like, say a prayer, see how it feels, see how it sits with you. See if you can give some faith to, um, you know, divine intervention and, and, and take some pressure off yourself. That's all. It's, it's, it couldn't be more true. You know, I started to even, and, and, and I'll tell you, you know, getting, cause I was thoroughly upset when i had to tell you oh i can't record this week i got covid right when i got home from the biggest weekend in my life you know i've been working the past 15 years and finally got recognized on a certain scale for the work i've been doing and then i meet people like you and i got this going on and i have to cancel 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 and i and 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 i'm and i'm going why you know but instead this time because i've been praying for more trust because i keep when something everything's great it's great but when something's bad you I don't get mad at God, but I start to do this like woe is me type of deal. Oh, you mean you you start to become human, right? Right. Like we all do this. We all do this. (laughs) Totally normal. Yes. But this time I said, you know what? For once, it's not about me. Every single gift I've got was given to me for a reason. It can be taken away just as quickly as it was given. Right. But, But why? Why? And you know what? I figured it out this morning. because. This whole week, instead of me pouting, bitching, whining, complaining to my wife, oh, I'm never going to get better, that type of shit that I say. Oh, I can't work out. I'm miserable. You know what I did? I sat here and figured out that, one, that I have been like biohacking my entire life for the past 15 years. Didn't understand that terminology because of the, the thing, you know, the area I'm involved in technically, reading, met I can't tell you how many people just this past week, because like you said, everybody's human. I don't look at people's followers, who they are, whatever. I don't give a shit. I will at least attempt to speak like they're just like me or just like anybody else. And I've studied and read and learned so many things about me, what I'm doing wrong and how I can help people this past week. And it made me realize, man, you've been on the wrong path, like with things you're doing, but there was a reason why and it all culminated to this. And so I figured that out this morning. (laughs) Like, this is why I got sick. And this is why, because I needed to take a step back after the Olympia weekend 
and because you, you you know you get on such a high when something happens and you just kind of you know and it, it grounded me and it it gave me the time to sit and there was the reason why and people need to figure out there's always a reason why everything that you get was given you didn't you know you maybe you earned it but it was given to you and it can just as quickly be taken away yeah, we have to figure that out, the, the why. And we have to remember to have the gratitude even when it doesn't seem to make sense. Because I remember you you really wanted to do this last week and I was ready and I was excited, but you were like, man, I'm so congested. I think mm-hmm. you said you gave yourself a bloody nose even trying to like clear your nose and sinuses. But like, what a gift was it to have another week to even prepare for this conversation? You know what yeah. I mean? Like you were able to like go through and you listen to some of my podcasts and I really appreciate that you, I've seen your comments on my Instagram and just like being so supportive. And that is something we wouldn't have had, had we rushed the process and had that, you know, that done the the call that week. And so this conversation, I think, took a whole level of depth that we wouldn't have had if we didn't have an extra week to kind of formulate the kinship and, you know, getting to know each other and the depth and, you know, what you're trying to do, what I'm trying to do and combining our messaging. So I think the product turns out better for it. You feel better. You look good. You're not all congested. Like, we're good. Like, you're good. Take your hands off the wheel. Jesus has got it, man. That's right. 